This is a map of Hawaii, an island state in the western United States located 2,000 miles from the U.S. mainland. Hawaii comprises almost all of the Hawaiian archipelago and is home to Mauna Loa, which is possibly the greatest volcano on Earth. Besides this one, there are four other volcanoes that inhabit these islands, and the five shield volcanoes erupted somewhat sequentially in the past, and now Koala is extinct. Two of the other ones lie dormant, whereas the two others are active. These are also part of the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Geological evidence has suggested that two ancient shields, named Ninole and Kulau, were buried by the young and active volcano, and nowadays geologists consider these outcrops a part of the earlier building of the major volcano, which accounts for more than half of the island's surface area. Since two of them are still active, the island of Hawaii is continuously growing, and Loa is the largest sub-aerial volcano, not only in mass, but also in volume as well. The only historically known volcano that is bigger than that one is the Tamu Massif, an extinct submarine shield volcano that's located in the northwest Pacific Ocean. Loa has relatively gentle slopes with an estimated volume of about 75,000 cubic kilometers, but its peak is around 38 meters lower than that of Kia, which is also its neighbor. So far, the lava eruptions from this gigantic volcano have been silica poor and pretty fluid. They also tend to be non-explosive in nature, and the massive supervolcano has probably been erupting for at least 700,000 years now, with experts believing that it emerged above sea nearly 400,000 years ago. The Loa derived its magma from the Hawaii hotspot, which is responsible for the creation of the Hawaiian island chain over a span of about 10 million years. Geologists have predicted that the slow drift of the Pacific Plate will carry the volcano away from the hotspot in about 1 million years from now, and it will eventually become extinct. But for now, it's here right over the hotspot, brewing and blowing as it keeps humanity on edge from the fear of a devastating eruption. The most recent eruption would occur between March 24th to April 15th of 1984. While the recent eruptions of this giant volcano have been casualty-free, the 1926 and 1950 eruptions did destroy villages, and Loa has been included in the Decade Volcanoes program, which encourages the study and analysis of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world. And because Loa fits the very definition of dangerous and potentially hazardous volcanoes, the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory has been intensely monitoring it since 1912. Most people think an asteroid will strike the planet and end life here, or maybe a nuclear war will, but there's also another gruesome way for life as we know it to come to a sudden halt. The raging magma building pressure eager to ooze out of the Earth's surface can also destroy the planet that we live on. From northern Nevada through southern Idaho, and up to northwest Wyoming, there's a scary amount of volcanoes that are scattered intermittently, stretching about 560 kilometers. Some of these are supervolcanoes and are nearly 18 million years old. So, what exactly is a supervolcano? Well, that would be a volcano with a documented past eruption having a volcanic explosivity index of 8, the largest ever recorded value on the index. The volume of deposits for such volcanoes is always greater than 1,000 cubic kilometers. The supervolcanoes form when magma from the mantle of the Earth makes its way to the crust but is unable to break through it. Pressure keeps building in the massive and continuously growing pool of magma until the crust finally gives way, unable to contain the pressure it ruptures. This can occur at hot spots like the Yellowstone Caldera, the Hawaii hotspot, Louisville Ridge, St. Helena Hotspot, Canary Hotspot, and others. The large volume supervolcanic eruptions are mostly associated with large igneous provinces where lava and volcanic ash can cover huge areas. Super eruptions can be incredibly devastating, and they can cause long lasting climate changes, wipe out species, and even humanity. The most recent super eruption with a VEI 8 happened 26,500 years ago in the Taupo volcano located in New Zealand. The Deccan traps were produced by the Reunion host pit around 66 million years ago, 
And according to scientific consensus, this event being coincident with the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event wasn't a chance occurrence. Similarly, the largest flood basalt event called the Siberian Traps occurred 250 million years ago, and this was coincident with the largest known mass extinction in history of planet Earth, the Permian-Triassic extinction event. This clearly indicated that if volcanoes go rogue, no one can stop the end of the world from happening. Mount St. Helens, an active stratovolcano located in Skamania County, Washington, is also part of the Cascade Volcanic Arc, a segment of the Pacific Ring of Fire. On May the 18th of 1980, a major eruption by this volcano would result in the deadliest and most economically catastrophic volcanic event in the history of the United States. A series of blasts from the summit would escalate into a major explosive eruption that took place at 8.33 a.m. on that fateful day. This eruption had a volcanic explosivity index of 5. The eruption was preceded by a two-month-long series of earthquakes and steam-venting episodes. An earthquake on May the 18th caused the entire weakened north face to just slide away. This sector collapse was the largest recorded sub-aerial landslide in history, and the partly molten rock, rich in high-pressure gases and steam, would suddenly explode northward towards Spirit Lake, and a hot mixture of lava and pulverized older rock would take over the landslide. The eruption column from the Mount St. Helens rose to a whopping 24 kilometers in the atmosphere and deposited ash in 11 states along with some Canadian provinces. This also caused the snow, ice, and several complete glaciers on the volcano to melt, and this melting would result in a series of lahars that reached as far as the Columbia River. The thermal energy released in this eruption was equal to 26 megatons of TNT, about 57 people would be killed, and the property damage would amount to up to $1.1 billion. This was just a VE5 eruption, but could you imagine the consequences if one of the supervolcanoes would have erupted? The fear of a similar or even more devastating volcanic event is keeping the scientist community up at night, especially the active ones like Loa and Kalal. Scientists have been monitoring the unsettled geological activity on Hawaii's biggest island, and according to them, a dominating eruption of the volcano that could destroy the landscape isn't imminent just yet. However, Loa may be waking up from its long slumber. Being half of the island's mass, any surge of activity in Loa means that the entire island and the region around it could be in grave danger. Its neighbor has been in the throes of a fierce and sometimes destructive eruptive period for many decades now. The huge eruption from Kalau in 2018 flattened an entire residential neighborhood. About 2,000 people would be displaced as a consequence of that eruption. This dramatic activity has been stealing the attention from the bigger sibling, who has been asleep since its last eruption in 1984. In March of 2021, the Hawaii Volcano Observatory would record more than 200 small magnitude earthquakes underneath of Loa, and these, along with other observations, indicated an increase in activity that suggested the flow of magma into the shallow storage system of this volcano had increased. It's now an established reality that Loa is waking up. Scientists are emphasizing that an eruption isn't exactly around the corner or a necessary outcome, but HVO has urged that now is the time to revisit personal eruption plans. Areas on the western shore of the island just south of the main tourism hub have been deemed the most vulnerable. Here the lava flow, in case of an eruption, would reach the ocean and the populated areas within a matter of hours. In the previous eruption of Loa in 1984, lava actually reached the outskirts of Hilo on the other side of the island, but it took several weeks to get that far. The earthquakes that shook the Hawaiian peak the previous year were followed by enhanced seismic activity on the summit that lasted for a good few months. Loa has erupted around 33 times since 1853, but since the 1984 eruption from the summit crater, it has not seen any eruption activity or even active lava flow. The last eruption of Loa was so intense, however, and massive that the lava only stopped 7 miles from Hilo. 
All of this activity and even the existence of the Hawaii Island chain can be attributed to the slowly drifting Pacific plate of the Earth. It's drifting across a hot spot in the Earth's mantle by a few inches every single year. This adds to around 32 miles per million years, and the rising magma from this hot spot pushes up and out of the shield-type Hawaiian volcanoes, leading to a constant growth in the islands. The rising and releasing of magma and gases beneath these volcanoes make the Earth move, and this movement is often manifested as earthquakes, thereby indicating that another eruption is possibly on its way. Such seismic spikes have been observed before in previous eruptions as well. This is exactly why the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory is reminding residents to prepare for a possible eruption, just like the residents of any other area that sees regular hurricanes should prepare for the season in advance. Pre-planning and vigilance will come in handy in case of an emergency, and depending on where and how the eruption occurs, on Loa, the speed at which the lava flows reach various areas would greatly differ, as indicated by this lava flow response time map issued by the USGS. The seismic activity at Loa right now is not even close to what it was in 1985 or even in the previous eruptions, but with such active volcanoes, it's not a matter of if it erupts, it's a fact of when it erupts, especially now that the activity on Loa has gained some momentum. And it's not just Loa that has a risk. A risk of other volcanoes erupting has also substantially increased in the area. Another thing that is important to keep into consideration is that nobody really knows where the lava will flow in case an eruption might come. As in the 2008 eruption of Kalau, the lava didn't come from the famous crater. In fact, it oozed out from dozens of fissures that opened up in a residential neighborhood. Scientists are doing their best to predict and also prepare for these eruptions. They warn people to stay on the alert, but the locals have their own system of beliefs as well. There's actually a saying in Hawaii about the goddess of the volcano that Pele goes where she wants. So when she begins to move, all people can do is move out of her way and hope that she wants them beforehand. However, this doesn't mean that the locals don't prepare for an impending disaster. These days, they pack go bags containing all of the essential items you know, just in case they have to evacuate in an emergency. They usually keep all of their important documents like birth certificates, deeds, legal papers, and more in their go bags, along with some food, their medication, and their personal hygiene products. It is to be noted that an eruption at Loa doesn't necessarily mean a threat to the locals or even their property, as half of the eruptions recorded in the history of this massive volcano have actually remained contained to the remote summit region. However, that doesn't mean that people should be careless, as some eruptions have actually sent lava flowing into the ocean within a few hours. The extent of an eruption is difficult to predict ahead of time, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Besides, lava isn't the only harmful product of an eruption. The toxic gases that come along with it can also be fatal to the population. And while the Loa keeps the residents of Hawaii on edge, there's another giant with much more hazardous eruptions in its history that might also be rising from its slumber, making the worst of our nightmares a possibility. That's right, I'm talking about the Yellowstone Caldera. It's located in Yellowstone National Park. Scientists are now trying to predict how this ticking time bomb, as they say, will explode while hoping that it just fizzles out in the end. This sleeping giant in the western United States occasionally stirs up, but so far it hasn't woken up in full in 70,000 years. However, it would be incredibly difficult to deal with this forceful beast when it does finally wake up. The massive supervolcano sits on top of a hot spot that's made out of molten and semi-molten rock and it's breathing in and out thanks to the movement of magma underneath. The magma that is underneath of Yellowstone pulls into magma chambers, or reservoirs, only 6 to 10 kilometers beneath the park, and that causes the ground to swell and rise. And when this magma does finally begin to cool down and solidify, the ground then falls again. Since 1923, those who are in the studying of volcanoes have been measuring its activity, 
According to them, the ground rose nearly 25 centimeters between the years of 2004 and 2009. However, in 2010, the land then began to fall. This slow and steady rise has puzzled many a scientist who believe that the activity may be a premonition of an impending eruption. They're worried that the eruption at the Yellowstone caldera will be much more intense than anyone could fear from Loa's eruption owing to the history of the supervolcano. According to Dr. Steve Anderson, a volcanologist and earth sciences professor at the University of Northern Colorado, scientists don't actually know what to expect in the case of the Yellowstone caldera erupting. During July of 2022, the University of Utah seismographic stations located 59 earthquakes in the Yellowstone National Park region alone. These stations are responsible for the operation and the analysis of the Yellowstone Seismic Network. The largest event of the month would be a minor earthquake of 3.1 magnitude, located nearly 14 miles south-southwest of Mammoth Hot Springs. That earthquake would take place on July the 30th at around 1.44 a.m., and the event was part of a swarm of 13 small earthquakes that occurred between the 29th and 30th of July. Such earthquakes account for about 50% of the seismic activity in the Yellowstone region. The continuous GPS stations in the Yellowstone caldera have also recorded a few millimeters of uplift close to the Norris Geyser Basin since the beginning of the summer. The deformation has been attributed to snow melt that percolates into the ground, causing the surface to swell up like a sponge. This signal is an annual occurrence and is superimposed on the yearly trend of the caldera subsidence. It's been ongoing since 2015 at a rate of 1 to 2 inches annual. The current activity in the caldera does not indicate an eruption is coming in the near future. Learning from the past, though, is necessary. In the case of this supervolcano, the level of recent underground activity has fueled some speculation regarding the intensity of a future eruption. In the past decade, the volcano has continuously risen at the fastest rate ever recorded, the Yellowstone region averages between 1,000 to 3,000 earthquakes every single year. While most of them are unnoticeable with a magnitude less than 3, these quakes do tell scientists a lot about the speed of magma that's filling the chambers underneath. A rise in the rattling and shaking in the park may suggest a fresh batch of magma has recently pulled into the reservoir. However, because absolutely everything happening in the caldera has not been analyzed for long, it's not exactly easy to predict what is going on. This makes it harder for the geologists to estimate the next move of this massive volcano, rendering it all the more dangerous. The analysis of this Yellowstone volcano's distant past does provide some clues, however. Geological evidence points that the Yellowstone has produced three colossal eruptions in the past 2.1 million years. Volcanologists have stated that these eruptions occurred at gaps of nearly 600,000 to 800,000 years, and evidence would suggest that the last great eruption occurred about 640,000 years ago and is sprawled throughout the park and across thousands of kilometers of the landscape that surrounds it. Each of the three eruptions vomited out massive amounts of volcanic ash, gas, magma, and other debris ended up covering most of the continental U.S., and some of the material from the past explosions has been found as far away as Louisiana. And after each eruption, the volcano has collapsed on itself, sucking in trees, mountains, and almost every other thing that's within the landscape. The depression formed as a result of this activity is called a caldera, and experts have warned that a caldera-forming eruption event in Yellowstone will be a colossal natural hazard. They've also explained that the last Yellowstone eruption was nearly 1,000 times greater than the devastating Mount St. Helens eruption that killed more than 50 people, thousands of animals, and burnt hundreds of square kilometers of land in Oregon and Washington. The last explosion from the Yellowstone volcano shot a fatal plume of ash, lava, and toxic gases thousands of meters into the air. A third of the continent would be plunged entirely into darkness by this event, the pyroclastic flows sped across the region at an astonishing speed, burying and shattering almost everything that came into their way. The magma spilling out of the ground scorched the beautiful landscape for many kilometers. 
and some evidence of the last eruption is also found in the 50 kilometers wide and 70 kilometers long Yellowstone caldera. The remnants of volcanic debris can still be observed in an area now called the Lava Tup. So what will happen if Yellowstone does erupt? Well, according to experts, the lava from the volcano will probably destroy just about everything within a 40-mile radius of its blast. Major cities like Denver, Salt Lake City, and Boise, Idaho would possibly be wiped out. The massive amounts of volcanic materials in the atmosphere would eventually rain down toxic ash across the whole of the U.S., but the Northwest is going to face even more worse conditions. The ash will also kill plants, animals, crush buildings with its weight, block the roads, and completely destroy farmlands for an entire generation. According to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, the eruption of the Yellowstone caldera could estimatedly cause $3 trillion worth of damage. However, the most horrific aspect would still be the loss of life. Scientists are hoping that such an event does not occur. They've established that such explosions can be extremely rare, and the last lava flow from Yellowstone took place about 70,000 years ago. But even today, hikers do come across evidence of the previous eruptions in the form of distinct rock layers along the trails. Today, though, scientists are keeping a close eye on every single hiccup that this volcano makes now that its activity keeps warning us of a major event in the future. In 1815, an explosion of Mount Tambora, located on the Sumbawa Island, modern-day Indonesia, could provide some insight into what a massive eruption from one of the world's active and potentially hazardous volcanoes would look like. This has been deemed the most powerful volcanic eruption recorded in human history. With a VEI of 7, this eruption spewed out 160 to 213 cubic kilometers of volcanic material into the atmosphere. This was the most recent confirmed eruption of this magnitude. Mount Tambora reached its climax on the 10th of April, 1815, and a rise in steaming and small eruptions occurred during the coming three years. The ash from this eruption would be dispersed around the world, leading to the lowering of global temperatures. This prompted what we now know as the year without a summer in 1860. Around 11,000 people would die from direct volcanic effects of this eruption, and between 49,000 to 90,000 deaths would result from the consequential famine and epidemic diseases on the islands. The significant period of climate change led to extreme weather and harvest failures around the globe. The Mount Tambora eruption may have been devastating, but our planet has faced much worse in its past. Some 200 million years ago, huge and widespread volcanic eruptions would trigger the end Triassic extinction. This massive extinction decimated 76% of all marine and terrestrial species, marking the end of the Triassic period. This would be the event that cleared the way for dinosaurs to dominate the Earth for the coming 135 million years, and not a whole lot is known about what caused the extinction, but most scientists do agree that the massive volcanic eruptions from a large region over a short period of time would play a key role. The large region, known as Central Atlantic Magmatic Province, or CAMP, would spew out a huge amount of lava and gas that both contained carbon dioxide, sulfur, and methane. This sudden burst of gases may have actually created intense global warming and acidification of oceans, ultimately resulting in the death of thousands of plants and animal species. Researchers at MIT, Columbia University, and many other acclaimed institutions have now all determined that these eruptions occurred exactly when the extinction began. This is strong evidence that favors the theory that volcanic activity indeed triggered the end Triassic extinction. From their measurements, a team of scientists reconstructed the volcanic activity in the region 201 million years ago. According to the reconstruction, the eruption of magma occurred in repeated bursts over a period of 40,000 years. It's a pretty short geologic period, but Sam Boeing, a professor of geology in MIT's Department of Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Science, stated that there was no question that the extinction occurred at the same time as the first eruption, and if activity like that happens again, there's a thin chance that humanity would be able to survive it. 
Should we seriously start thinking about packing our bags and moving to Mars in the future? The latest volcanic eruption that frightened the entire world took place on the Tongan Archipelago in the southern Pacific Ocean. This eruption reached a powerful and immense climax at around four weeks after the initiation of a January 15, 2022 eruption. This one lies only 65 kilometers north to the country's main island, named Tongatapu, and it's part of a highly active volcanic Tonga Kermatic Islands volcanic arc. The eruption would be rated at at least VEI-5 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, and it triggered tsunamis on Tonga, Fiji, American Samoa, and others along the entire Pacific Rim. As a consequence of this eruption, damaging tsunamis would strike the coasts of New Zealand, Japan, the United States, Russia's Far East, Chile, and Peru, and at least four people lost their lives, with many other being injured and many more missing until this date. This would be the largest volcanic eruption since the Mount Pinatubo eruption in 1991, a most powerful one since the 1983 eruption of Krakatoa. Experts at NASA would determine that this eruption was hundreds of times more powerful than the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. This means that it was far larger than any other 20th century volcanic event of nuclear bomb testing, only rivaled by Krakatoa's eruption, but it took place in the 19th century. An official at GNS Science explained that the suspected cause of the tsunami associated with the Hunga Tonga event was an undersea eruption that destroyed a part of the island on the 14th of January. This would cause seawater to fill into the volcanic vent, triggering a second undersea explosion the next day. The second explosion was so huge that it actually penetrated through the overlying water and initiated a tsunami. The economic damage from this eruption in Tonga would amount to $90.4 million, and the Global Facility for Disaster Reduction and Recovery reported that 600 buildings, including 300 homes, would be damaged by the tsunami. Around 85% of Tonga's agricultural economy was severely affected. Now, experts may be optimistic that such catastrophic events will not be occurring anytime in the future, but there's really no way of absolutely determining what's going on in the hot spots under these formidable volcanoes. At some point, one or more of these supervolcanoes are bound to explode. We do not know how humanity will cope with the brunt of such a deadly and devastating event. Besides, what can we actually do except to evacuate in the case of indicators of an eruption appear? Amongst all the other possible catastrophes that could wipe out life on Earth, we need to keep in mind that a likely source of devastation is the magma that's brewing beneath all of us. And in your opinion, which of the world's most active and dangerous volcanoes is most likely to erupt first? Be sure to tell us all about it in the comments down below.